Yeah, we're gonna have some fun. So uh, what I did was I drew out on the ground for you guys the uh, one possible scenario for how to organize these, these hominids. Um, this is difficult for scientists as well, remember? Like, and this is not the only version of this. There are multiple, and this continually changes this family tree. As we find new evidence, as we discover new things, as we date new fossils, uh, this has been redrawn more times than you can imagine. But some of the fossils on there, they, they haven't moved very much. And it's only possible to move them within the time domains that they are. Like you can't put them in a time period that we know they didn't exist in. But trying to figure out who's related to who has just as much to do with everything you guys looked at as like what time they're in. So like when we're trying to figure out, is it closer to modern humans? We're looking at things like the face angle. We're looking at things like the size of the, of the brain, right? We're looking at things like, did it walk upright? Those things are obviously more closely related than something that didn't, right? So we're gonna try and sort of put things on here. And what I want you guys to do is just have some fun for the next little bit. See if you can't figure out one way how to arrange that thing with all those skulls that we looked at. Every single skull on the, on the table has a place. Even the gorilla has a place on there. And I know we didn't do the gorilla. So see what you come up with, and then we're going to kind of critique it a little bit. See what we can figure out. What does LCA mean? Oh, LCA, great, great question. Last common ancestor. So that's the bottom. That means that something down there was related to everything. And at the very, very top up there, I should have written it, I'll, I will here in a second, that's present to the left of me up here is present, to the back is earliest time. So when you've got here like 7.5 million years ago, seven million years ago, um, some different dates on there to kind of give you an idea of how far, because I couldn't go sequentially very well, like 3.0 to 3.1 is a big jump on the paper, because I had to leave space to fit the skulls. So ask yourself the first question, Who's gonna go way back there at the bottom? And who's gonna go way up there at the top? And then try and fill in. See what you can come up with. Who's gonna go at the bottom? The ends of the lines mean where you're gonna put a skull. And this is present up here. <laughs> Somebody needs to go here, 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 to those. Put the skull there. Oh, yes, leave the skull there. Yep, that's an obvious one. That's got to go somewhere. <laughs> Do we need your jaw with it? Yeah, we'll put the jaw with it. There we go. So they're going to go at the ends of those lines. Well, that's the same one. So that's the same one technically. That was the cro magnet, so that's the same one technically. So we've got one of those already. So they're only alive today if they extend all the way up to the end of those lines. Okay, that looks pretty good. Put old uh, shallow throw up there. Well, chimps are still alive today. Yeah. So where are they going to go? They need to go at the end somewhere. definitely the most ancient looking so in a way you're kind of arranging them as to like which ones look more like a chimp and which ones look more like a human are we talking chimpy or human -y? yeah you might want to fix something down there yeah you can move stuff around there you go move them around okay okay okay
<laughs> yep, you better get our Australia think up Is this the line right here? Yep, that's the line. Something should go there. Neanderthal? Is that Neanderthal that you just grabbed there? Yeah. Which one do you think it is? I don't know. We'll keep sorting out. Once we get them all on there, it'll be easy to sort out. I think it's because it kind of comes up. So what this is showing you here, these two lines that are close here, there's two things here that are going to look pretty similar. They're pretty closely related. Right here. There'd be two things. Wait, wouldn't it be uh, around the same time period? So the same, same genus might be helpful. If we put things in the same genus, we mean that they're pretty closely related. Let me let me stand up. Please. So <laughs> think about that now in terms of what you're doing. Uh, if something's in things the things genus like Homo, it's probably really closely related to us. If it's in the genus, you know. Yeah, so why don't we try and fix that? You can move them around. What's that? Nope, nothing goes there. That's the last time the ancestor, and then the lines go this direction. So something's going to go at the end of those lines. Mr. Hamling, why is it going down and then it goes from 3 to 3.1? Um, because I had to kind of get a lid in there. And I, I, I just had to kind of fit it in there a little bit. They're, they're pretty close to the same time. But that's a good question. Probably because I pulled my times off of a different thing and then made the tree. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, hey, look at this. So to answer your question, John, the, the 3.0 and the 3.1 are like, they really should be right next to each other. I just spaced it out so that I could get them in there. They still should be like small, though. They're essentially the same time. Yeah, that works for them. Frame. Yeah, so take a look there, like, look at the differences just in the skulls themselves. Do you, now, there's a problem you need to fix first up there. Okay. Up here? Yep, the very top there. Would it be these two? Well, what's that one on the left there? Two. Yeah. That's still alive today. It's still alive today. That line dead ends. Hey, look at that. Oh. Oh, that's, well, that's not actually all the way to present there. That line there is extinct. Oh, yep. look, look to your right a little bit. You're right. Ah. <laughs> There's a line over there. <laughs> now what do you do with the chimp? Which oh, one is present? Yeah. Which one of these three lines is present? The right one, the far right one. This one? Yeah. Okay. So you're good on that. Fix your chimp. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. So we are closely related to chimps. They are our closest li living relative, but that doesn't mean we're directly descended from them. Or even that closely the related to them. Be here. Ah, yeah. there we go. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so then who's that there in the middle between them? Um, is that... Is that Heidelberg? That's, <laughs> that's in the Neanderthal. I thought that was in the Neanderthal too. So pop one of those, this pop one, the ugly this Neanderthal one, out. Yeah. This Just put that other Neanderthal down there. 000, 000, 000. This one's got to go on there someplace. He's pretty recent. He's pretty recent. Is that 
Heidelberg. Yep, that's Heidelberg. Which one is that one? Awesome. Now I'm going to give you another hint. Take a look at where you've got Heidelberg there, where you've got Neanderthals, and then where you've got Homo sapiens. There's a funny little dashed line that I did here. This little dashed line. Because we actually have evidence of interbreeding between two of those species. That we know for sure interbred. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, we know for a fact that Neanderthals interbred with modern humans. And if you have any traces, essentially, of European DNA, you have some Neanderthal in you. Oh, it is. I just read it wrong. Who would not have Neanderthal? A purebred African person. Interesting, huh? So that tells you something about where the breeding took place. It didn't happen in Africa, right? Because the Neanderthals had already moved out. They were already north, and then when Homo sapiens moved oh, out, so. they met, met Neanderthals, probably multiple times, until Neanderthals were no more. Is there not supposed to be one at 5.5? Mm, where are we at? Yep, there should be one more. Are we missing one? Did I miss it? Oh, I'm sorry, there shouldn't be one here. This is just uh, kind of my dead end here. Uh, I didn't continue, I don't have a stall for that. So now take a look, where are we going? We're going to have to do some rearranging. Some things are going to have to shift. Uh, That's Homo habilis. Down. There we go. See what you got there. You got the dating doesn't really make sense okay. because, <laughs> because if it's two point seven to two point three, it cannot be down here. Did I mess up some of my dates there? Probably. I might have. This is one this is one potential tree that's been drawn. Let's see. I think you guys have what I've got here. Marty. Yeah, no. <laughs> Do you like to see the paper? Yeah, yes. <laughs> and it is possible I messed up somewhere. Practice. Okay. It's possible I messed up the date somewhere. That's entirely possible. But this is, you guys have the right tree though, as to what I drew here. So uh, looking at that, uh, as we go through time, take a look at the features in the different skulls, right? Look at, look at what's happened there. And there's a lot of questions as you get up there towards us, especially between Heidelberg, um, are we a direct descendant of Heidelbergensis? It is, is maybe even Neanderthal like somehow related in there? Because those are all really close together um, in terms of time, uh, the only thing we know really for certain is that Neanderthals and humans interbred, right? Uh, we don't have any evidence about um, Heidelberg yet as to what happened there. But I like what you did there with the chimp and the, uh, uh, the gorilla because they're still around. So if nothing else, it kind of illustrates to us like the size, the head size change. And you can definitely see the change in, uh, in like shape and facial features. Let's, uh, I'm gonna bring this down there so we can see a little better. I'm gonna walk through here, do a quick walk through. You guys did a good job. So if we start down here at the last common answer, would you guys flip uh, Homo sapiens for me? So it's facing towards us. There we go. So we start down here at the last common ancestor and going this direction, we're gonna end up all the way up to modern day with these two species, the gorilla and the chimpanzee. And the chimpanzee is on the on my right here, 
because the chimpanzee, if we follow its line, is truly our most recent still living ancestor. We are most closely related, related to the chimpanzee, so we've shown that here. But where do we branch off? Well, it's somewhere around six to seven million years ago where we've actually branched off from the chimpanzee. So we are not direct descendants of Mr. Chimp up there, nor the other way around. See how there's no way that makes any sense, right? But there's a common ancestor somewhere back here. And as we move forward, we run into the first one here, Shalanthropus, who definitely looks the oldest and most chimpy of any of the skulls that we've got up here. And as we move forward from there, we meet Artie, Artipithecus, right? Still a very small head. Looks quite chimpy, but it's getting some more modern features a little bit. The Australopithecines show up, right? Lucy. Uh, the, um, um, the Paranthropus, the genus Paranthropus, you can see how similar these two skulls are. They're, I had a hard time drawing this, but they're really kind of, most scientists view them as sort of an offshoot that didn't really necessarily go anywhere. They're not really our direct ancestors, right? They're just kind of an off branch off of this tree someplace. In fact, none of these are necessarily our direct ancestors yet, right? They're all branches off of a tree that just keeps branching and branching and branching, okay? Until we get up towards this direction, we meet Homo habilis, and we're really starting to look a lot more human in many ways, right? This thing is definitely upright. It's got a larger brain face ratio. Okay. And then we move forward here. Here's Erectus. Now I kind of made an end shoot here. I should cross that out for you. In Erectus suddenly, what happens to brain size here? It's a big jump, isn't it? So from here, up to erectus, suddenly brain size increases dramatically. Take a look at the ridge here. It's still really prominent brow ridge, right? But his brain is humongous in comparison to habilis. Okay, so erectus gets really, really big. Um, now here's where many scientists think there's a direct ancestry. Okay, we, we think there, there may be a direct link right here from erectus right on up to these next three. And over here is Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, much, much larger skull, still with these horrible looking brow ridges. We have Heidelberg, which is a, a kind of a newer fossil, kind of a weird one, right? We're not really sure exactly where to put Heidelbergensis, but it's definitely up here with us. And so finally, the last ones remaining here, Homo sapiens. And that's the whole spread. Ooh, pretty good job. And like I said, there's lots of ways to draw this, and scientists have fiddled around with it some. And I know some of my dates are a little goofed up, but you can at least get a feel for kind of how these guys are related. Okay, so if you've got out your paper, um, what we're going to do is I'm not going to write all the data into this. What I want you to do is to help me out with your data. And we're going to try and figure out when each of these characteristics sort of emerged. Like, like was, did something happen before something else? And maybe we can kind of somewhat start to tell the story of hominid evolution here. And maybe you can remember some of the, the fossil skulls that we looked at down there. So the first thing let's take a look at here. Uh, I put in bold all the things that we're going to try and really compare. So let's look at the the, uh, the continents here where they're located. Who is the very first one of these things to spread from East Africa? Yep. So the spread out of Africa, the first the first hominid to really to, to, to start to leave Africa here is Homo erectus here, okay? Because he's in, in Asia. See that here? 
I'm gonna just do this. Because after that point in time, everybody is out. Okay, see that? All the way up to Mr. Worldwide here. We're, we're all out of, we're all out of Africa at this point. It's not that there's no hominids in Africa, but we've spread. Okay, starting with Erectus here, um, we find Heidelberg in Germany. We find Neanderthals in Europe, in Southeast, Central Asia. Uh, we find Homo sapiens, uh, the very first groups of them in Europe, Africa, and Asia. And then the most modern Homo sapiens, we find them everywhere. We have spread like cockroaches across the planet, right? We're all over the place. So getting out of Africa was a pretty big deal for, for hominids. Um, kind of what might have led up to that, or like when did we, when did we leave? Let's see, see what happens here. So comparing heights, do you guys notice who, um, who's the first one that kind of starts to have large-ish, like almost approaching two meter heights? Did anybody figure that out? Look across your heights here in meters. Who's the first one that really starts to have like approaching modern heights? Like a modern Homo sapiens is somewhere around like 1.7 to 1.6 meters. What's that? Boise. Boise? Shouldn't be Boise. Do we have the tip papers in some wrong places when you guys were down there? It's possible. See, I was trying to fix some of those while you guys were working. I didn't hang them up and they got hung in some of the wrong locations. <laughs> Let me just give you this. So the very first one that kind of hits modern proportions here is uh, Erectus, with, should be about 1.85 is where Erectus is. In modern humans, if you measure modern human, our average is somewhere around 1.7 for males, 1.6 for females. So right here, because before that, like Habilis here, these guys were pretty small, 1.35 for a Habilis. So there's a pretty big jump right here, right here at Erectus. So Erectus is kind of important for a number of reasons here. Okay. We have that. Now let's, we're gonna skip some of these because we really only just calculated these cranial heights so that we could do capacity. Okay, we, we did all that just so we could figure out capacity. Uh, what did you guys find on capacity? Where does the capacity take a big, a big jump when we're going across here? Erectus. Erectus again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight this because don't worry if you're working from home about the numbers, what's important is where it takes the jump. It takes the jump here. The cranial capacity is pretty small. Like somewhere here, uh, I don't know what you got for Homo habilis, but I had like uh, around 785 for Homo habilis. And then my, my big jump here was up to uh, almost 1700 for uh, Erectus. So that was a, a pretty big jump. So suddenly we've really approached sort of modern brain size, or at least we're getting darn close. Okay, once we hit up here, we're up into the 2000s through some of these guys. Okay. Uh, let's go down here. We did, we're going to skip over brain area. Let's look at brain to face area ratio, which is why we were calculating these other two. We were trying to get brain to face area ratio. So in other words, how big is the face compared or the brain compared to the face? Where does that take a big jump? Who do we suddenly take a jump with that in? That's what I had as well. Is that, do you guys see that on yours? You're like, there's a sudden change there. And this might've been a difficult one for you to get correct because of the fact that um, there was a lot of measurements to make and it was easy to mess them up. And then there was a multiplication going on in there too. But right around Habilis, Habilis is where, where I saw a jump. I went from, uh, the Paranthropus here, which is right around like 1.9, 1.6-ish for these guys, I jumped all the way up to 3.7. That's a pretty big jump for me. So depending on how you were measuring, you hopefully saw a jump right here in Homo habilis. 
So if you're if you're jotting this down, I'd at least make these mark these out, like lay them out on your paper, like put a mark there so you know it's going to help you answer the questions. That's why I'm doing this for you. So make sure you mark where these changes occur. Okay. Uh, Brow Ridge. Let's check out Brow Ridge. When do we start to see the Brow Ridge finally disappear here? Oh, wait, no, I jumped ahead. Sorry. Facial angle. Where do we see the facial angle suddenly starts to change a little bit? This one was tough. It was hard to measure. It should have at some point approached 90, which is what ours is. Ours is pretty close to 90. You might've got around 80 to 90, depending on how you're measuring. Um, but definitely Homo sapiens are a very steep jaw angle, okay? Um, going back from there, Neanderthals are pretty similar. Okay. Um, Heidelberg was also pretty similar. Um, looking back here to Habilis and Erectus, Erectus was kind of a little bit more slanted than um, Habilis was, but Habilis was definitely slanted. So if you had trouble on that one, we can pretty much color that facial angle all the way back here to Homo erectus. I'll zoom out for you guys here in a second. So the facial angle, you can get all the way back there. You guys see it now? Is that better or can you, re can you not read it? It's hard to see. All the way back here to erectus. Okay. Now the crest. We've got a crest for a while. It kind of disappears a little bit, and then you kind of see it come back. Some of that's due to the fact that some of the males had them, but females didn't, and I had female skulls. Um, but where does it kind of, where does the sagittal crest, the ridge across top of the head, where does it disappear for good and then just kind of not come back at all? Yep. So the sagittal crest, we definitely don't see it anymore at Habilis, from Habilis on out. Now Brow Ridge, that's an interesting one. Where does Brow Ridge finally disappear? Habilis? Habilis has got a, the eyebrow ridge, the bump that sticks out. Yeah. That's us. This is where we lose it. Homo sapiens doesn't have the brow ridge. Okay. All those other guys had at least a little bit of a brow ridge. Uh, we did number of molars, canines, incisors, and total number of teeth. Did you guys notice anything about those measurements? Yeah, they really should be all the same. We found one of uh, the Neanderthal skulls actually had an extra couple of teeth, but that's probably a quirk. Like sometimes that can happen. You get a few extra teeth in somebody's head. Um, but really all these teeth, I'll just do the, the total number, but all the teeth across the board, even the chimpanzee, which is not nearly as closely related as many of these things are, all the same, aren't they? whole thing. You could color in all the teeth here, but they're all the same. So obviously, no matter what happened, going from way, way back a long time ago, six million years ago, to present, nothing really had to happen too drastically with the teeth number. Now, some crazy stuff happened with the canines. What happened to the canine size? They got a lot shorter, didn't they? They, they really shrunk down. Um, comparing like to the chimpanzee with those humongous ones and even some of these early guys had some big canines our canines shriveled up right okay jaw shape the first point where we start to see that v-shaped jaw so we had you should have found that most of these guys had a u the two sides of their teeth lined up in the back jaw it's hard to tell my U's from my V's, sorry. 
These should all be U's. Who's that? Havilis should have still had a U. It was right at Erectus where we start to see that V. And we know we have a very V-shaped jaw. I'm going to color that in here. Are you starting to see why a lot of scientists say um, they, they, they drop Erectus as like a direct descendant, maybe even like, like somehow the, the Homo sapien line, our lineage comes directly from Erectus, but these, uh, some of these other ones, like maybe they're not like super closely related. They could just be an off branch. I mean, look at all the similarities here. Like the very first time something occurs is right there in Homo, Homo erectus was special. Uh, what else are we doing now? So the foramen magnum offset, that was a tough one to measure. Like the, and the reason we were measuring that, the point at which it actually hits pretty much zero. Did you notice that right here with Homo hab, these guys all had zero. And there was a little bit like, like uh, this one was pretty darn close to zero here, wasn't it? But really this just hits zero. In other words, the spine is directly underneath the head, right? The underneath of the head supporting the head right here at Homo habilis. So what do we know for certain from this point on because of this data right here? Every one of these is a what? Yep. These are all two leggeds. And there's one more back here that was without a doubt, we know was a two legged walker. It's kind of interesting. Right, and some of these were, were mixed, like we know chimps are definitely climbers. Some of these other ones were kind of mixed, right? Um, and we kind of debate about that a little bit, but we're, we're certain that, that Lucy Australopithecus was, was a biped. So that's why Australopithecus kind of gets a, a closer place on the trail to modern humans than these guys. Remember we talked about the two Paranthropus uh, they're just, they're, we kind of view them as an offset, like an offshoot. They didn't go anywhere, right? Whereas this is, might be along the line here. So these things here all walked on two legs. Got that one. It's a little bit of a... So uh, looking in terms of the very first one that really walked on two legs, we're looking at Australopithecus here. And then it kind of continues. Okay, so that should make these questions pretty easy. Let's go over a couple. They are on the back of the other paper that I gave you. I need a copy. So if you fill this out, you're going to have no trouble on the test or the quiz. Let's go through just a couple of these. In fact, if we just line this up right here, the rest of it's going to be really cake. So I'm going to let you guys work on um, most of these things here on your own because you can pretty much answer. We just did all these questions. And you see how to answer it, right? Like if we're, we're going to list these characteristics here from uh, first through last in the order they first appear to resemble those of modern humans. We've got height, totally bipeds, facial angle, brace to face ratio, cranial capacity, brow ridge height, the sagittal crest height. Okay, let's kind of list some of those here. So just glancing at those right here, out of all those things, looking at the paper here, 
going this direction, and notice I didn't include the teeth, which thing is the first thing that really changes? The what? The height. Um, not the, I didn't put height on there. Yeah, the upright thing. The upright thing really happens first. So if you put biped here on top, the first thing to occur is being a biped. So, I mean, that, that bears some explanation, you know, like, or at least some questioning. Why do humans start to walk upright? Why do these hominids, sorry, start to walk upright all the way up to modern day creatures? Yeah, John. Yeah, so there, there's a number of things going on at the time, and, and hunting probably played a role for sure. Um, to come down out of the trees, what we know about Africa, because this is in Africa right here, at the time that all this is occurring, is that Africa's experienced a transition from a forest, which is where uh, things like, say, Artipithecus lived and Chalanthropus, they lived in forests. And Africa's transitioning into a savanna, like a grassland. And so as that happens, there's less and less trees. So if you want food, you're gonna have to come down out of the trees and travel across open grassland. And if you're traveling across open grassland, um, it can be very inconvenient not to be able to see if a predator's in the distance. So being able to get up on two legs and look around like a chimpanzee will do if it needs to see over something, it can be a huge advantage. So that's one explanation for why bipedalism happened. Um, that and just the efficiency for a primate to move on two legs on the land and be able to hold its head up versus four legs and not really be able to see over the grass. So those are all possible solutions to that. But what we do know is that bipedalism is one of the quintessential things that happens that leads towards modern humans. Like up on two legs is a big deal for, for these creatures. Um, so let's keep going from there. Uh, what's the next thing to kind of happen here let's see what we have up next here we've got a couple things that kind of occur sort of right hand in hand right we could put them sort of right by each other if we look as we're going across here from bipedalism going this way the next thing that we see happen here are these two things here the brain to face ratio and the uh, sagittal crest. So it doesn't really matter where we put those in here, they kind of happen conjointly. But we've got the sagittal crest. Okay. That's now gone. And brain to face area increases. Ratio. In other words, for the first time, we're getting more brains than we have face. There's a big change there, and that happens right there uh, with Homo hab. The next thing down the list should be, if we keep going here, the next thing down the list, there's a couple of things that start to occur sort of together here. We've got our height increases, couple of these together, height. See it here. We've also got our cranial capacity. That's also going on. Okay. And then what's the other thing that's occurring right in here? It should be the face angle. All three of these guys, we'll just do this. All three of these guys sort of start to happen in the same organism. And these two sort of start to happen as well at the same time, the same organism. So those are kind of a, kind of a pair and that's kind of a triplet there. And then the very last thing on here, somebody just said it. What's the very last thing that kind of kicks off there? very last thing to change 
And we look at it and we go, that's a modern human. The what? Brow ridge. We lost the brow ridge. We got pretty. We lost that brow ridge. And this, the face angle is getting closer to 90, right? Cranial capacity got big. We got big heads. Height, we got tall. Just kind of writing down the differences here. So that's sort of the, the pattern that we see happening on the way to modern humans. So if you look at this and you go, okay, well, what was really important to get to us? Obviously the big brains, right? Having a large brain, um, things like that. But what was the least important thing to have change? Really, the, the brow ridge was the last thing. So maybe brow ridge selection had less to do with survival per se and maybe more to do with like what uh what humans preferred like what was pretty what was considered you know attractive um so we could kind of guess at some of these things you guys everybody have those now there's one characteristic that we said on here that doesn't change it just stays the same whole way across and that was the teeth the number of teeth in any of those scenarios just stays the same. The one we didn't talk about though, which is kind of interesting, is this jaw ridge, the jaw shape. You can't see it? The, the, jaw, ridge, the jaw shape changes to a V shape right here. This has to do with diet. So we could look right here and look up here. When we see Homo erectus, uh, their diet is changing. They're eating softer foods. Okay. All right, I think we can answer most of these questions now. Uh, study first. I think you guys can answer the rest of these pretty easily. If you take a look at what we did here, take one last look at our data here, and then you guys can answer the quiz. I will uh, try and zoom in here. So looking here, okay. Kind of see where that stuff changes over. Okay, so you can hop on there and take your quiz. All the answers should be there already. There we go.